I'm, I'm enjoying the, the design con uh, very much. Um, I find it to be um, really um, a, a group of uh, top level engineers and uh, that's really what's exciting about design con and um, I'm just glad to be uh, a part of it. Yes, um, yeah, I was uh, honored to be a uh, part of the, the keynote panel on Tuesday. And um, so our topic was, um, you know, what, what is it going to look like uh, in five years as far as um, signal integrity, power integrity, and electromagnetic interference? And um, so uh, there were five of us, and um, I, uh, I talked a little bit about uh, what I thought the EMI situation was going to look like in five years. And um, there's, there's really, um, th there's several uh, things that, that are coming that uh, are going to be issues. And one of those is uh, just the mere fact that there are so many wireless devices now um, that it's, uh, it's starting to crowd the, the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. And um, so I'm, I'm uh, guessing that interference is going to be a bigger factor uh, in the years to come with uh, more and more uh, communication systems and uh, 5G cellular and, and uh, all these uh, new data communication systems and so spectrum management and, um, and interference I think are going to be um, key factors. Uh, the, other, the other thing that I see is um, uh, in the area of autonomous vehicles and uh, not only uh, vehicle, uh, automobiles, but um, there's uh, major uh, thrusts into farming, uh, mining, um, transportation, uh, both on land and on sea. And um, so they're, they're already working on autonomous ships and uh, semi-trucks. One of the stories that I told during my um, my time was um, already uh, in Colorado where I'm based, uh, there was a, a test of an autonomous semi-truck. Um, it hauled 50,000 cans of Budweiser beer from, from the factory near Fort Collins uh, through Denver uh, to Colorado Springs. Uh, to the distributor there, uh, some 190 miles, and it was all autonomous. And of course, they didn't advertise that during the the event, but uh, it did come out in the news last year. <laughs> the the other thing is uh, th that I pointed out was that uh, designers uh, don't necessarily understand how electromagnetic fields move through circuit boards. And um, so there's, a, there's an aspect of education that we, that we need to continue working on. Uh, for example, uh, my, the last uh, six clients that I've worked with have been trying to incorporate wireless technology into their products. And the, the circuit boards uh, contain onboard DC to DC converters that create uh, a, a very broad band spectrum out past a gigahertz and so it desensitizes the uh, cellular modem receiver and uh, to the point where it's not allowed on the on the telephone system and so they design this product and they can't sell it or they can't ship it and uh, that, that's been a problem. And uh, you really have to uh, have a perfect circuit board design and uh, you know, uh, locate these things away from the modem. And there's a number of uh, design issues there that uh, need to be uh, thought about. <laughs> so education is a big deal. And uh, 
one of the challenges that I threw out was um, to, to the group was uh, we who really understand this stuff uh, attend Design Con every year, but that knowledge is not getting out to the um, upper level university students. Well, uh, of course, there's some of us that conduct seminars, but that only picks up a very small percentage of the, of the designers out there. Uh, I know that Design Con has uh, their, their boot camp sessions, uh, which is good. Uh, we need to keep doing that, but uh, even, even beyond that, uh, the challenge I threw out to the group was that uh, we who know this subject need to work more closely with the local universities and colleges. And uh, as an example, uh, I, uh, I, I've been working fairly closely with the University of Missouri uh, with their EMC program. And so I'm in touch with a lot of the students there. And um, as I can, I, I uh, give live uh, presentations uh, of you know, what, is, what it's like in the real world and, and, you know, as a product designer and as an EMC engineer. And so that's, that's some things we still need to work on. Well, again, you know, it's, uh, it's important uh, in all areas of manufacturing and industry to um, partner with the local colleges and universities. And I, I think that's the best way. Uh, of course, you know, they can take in interns, uh, but again, that's just a small percentage of, uh, of the population. So uh, we really need to uh, expand um, the, the education beyond that. And things like um, uh, writing articles for magazines, uh, some of the industry publications might disseminate the information more widely. Well, that, that is a tough, uh, yeah, how, how, how do we, how do we um, impart this knowledge? Uh, the problem is uh, many of the professors don't have practical experience in industry. And so uh, they're, they're you know, sometimes reluctant to uh, let people from industry in to give presentations. Um, uh, so it, it's a tough uh, question. Yeah, so webinars, uh, the, the question is, um, uh, c can webinars and online training help? And I, I think it, it can help. Uh, Todd Hubing is a good example. Uh, he was the keynote speaker on, on the Wednesday. And Todd is uh, connected with Clemson University and gives uh, university courses online. Uh, he lives in Wisconsin, and uh, so, you know, his students are literally all over the world. And so that's, that's a, a good answer to that problem. That's a, a big question. I, I have a two-day seminar on that topic. But uh, in, a, in a nutshell, um, a lot of the EMI issues um, are, uh, revolve around the circuit board design. And so I'm incorporating more uh, circuit design uh, content within my seminars. And um, basically, uh, it, it is really important to, um, for every signal layer, there needs to be a, a signal return plane adjacent to it. And if you don't have that, if you have a stack up like uh, and this is typical of, of my of the clients that I talk to. They have signal, ground, signal, signal, power, signal. And so the top half, signal, ground, signal, is fine. But the signal's reference to the power plane is, um, you know, that that was okay back in the 80s and 90s, but. We're decades past that, and the clock frequencies are so fast now that you can't uh, reference your signal to other than signal return. And so uh, you, you need more ground return planes in the circuit board now. And um, so some companies are finally realizing that, and I think most people here attending DesignCon understand that. 
but it's the designers in the trenches that don't get out to design con that are having the issues, really. Yes, uh, uh, designing your circuit board and uh, figuring out how many layers you need, there's trade-offs there between cost and, and EMI performance, but uh, we're going to have to get used to the idea of uh, paying more to, to get good EMI performance. And then the other, the other design thing that I am asked all the time is, what do you do with the uh, cable shields? Do you ground at one end or both ends? <laughs> and you know, it's just basic stuff like that that I try and teach and, and you know, many others also. The return current is going to want to go back to the source and a lot of engineers don't understand that. <laughs> the currents flow in loops. And uh, so, so if you're referenced to the power plane, it's okay if that power plane is closely coupled to the uh, actual return plane or the signal return. And you can do that by close, close coupling if they're closely adjacent. That, that works because there's built-in capacitance. Um, but otherwise, uh, multiple decoupling capacitors will help. Well, yes, uh, the question is, um, uh, are, are there other capacitor technologies uh, that w might work better than the standard ceramic uh, multi-layer capacitors? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, there's been uh, interdigital capacitors and uh, uh, the, the X2Y type capacitor with multiple grounds. And, and so, so those do have much lower series inductance. It's a series inductance that defeats the performance of a capacitor, and so any, t any way you can reduce that series inductance is important. And uh, not only on the capacitor itself, but within the circuit board, uh, you want many parallel paths or, or wide, short paths uh, to where the capacitor connects. So that all, all those can help couple that, those uh, two layers together more closely. Um, so my favorite part of DesignCon, um, I, I think, you know, I, I was honored to be part of uh, the keynote panel on Tuesday, and that, um, I, I was not expecting that. <laughs> um, but other than that, you know, I, I really enjoy uh, speaking with the exhibitors and um, getting new ideas and seeing some of the new equipment that's uh, available uh, as tools for both uh, uh, signal integrity, power integrity, and, and my favorite, EMI or EMC. Uh, DesignCon is important now because uh, the uh, clock and data rates are, are increasing at such a fast pace that um, you really need to uh, understand the physics of circuit boards now and how to move uh, signals <clears throat> from one place on the board to another. And um, in fact, some of the most recent technology is, uh, th the answer is you can't do it internally to the board. You have to use jumpers and, and coaxes to get the signals from one side to the, no to the other. Uh, you know, and we're talking 40 gigabits per second kind of data or higher. And uh, so it's, it's a challenge. And that's, that's one uh, thing that DesignCon brings to the table is uh, uh, all the, uh, the brain power <laughs> that's uh, around the world, really, that uh, congregates here and is able to um, discuss these kind of issues with each other and and uh, leverage each other's ideas, that's really important.